y'all welcome back to cute apron cooking my name is rachel and if this is your first time here thanks so much for stopping by i would love it if you would go ahead and click subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you'll get an alert whenever i post a video so hannah has been gone for three weeks today she's back the dessert that i'm making today is actually for hannah's birthday she was out of the state for her birthday so i wasn't able to make it for her so she came back last night and so I'm going to make it for her today. We exchanged gifts this morning. And this is one of the gifts that Hannah got me. It's a message board. And she got me a coffee cup. And it had the saying of life is what you bake it. So I put that same message on the message board. And I thought that was super cute. Hey Hannah, come here. It's so nice to have you back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back too, finally. <laughs> so, since you were not here on your birthday, I'm going to be making you a cheesecake for your birthday. And what it's going to be is a double chocolate cheesecake with a white chocolate filling and then a chocolate ganache on top. Ooh. So, you going to like that? Oh yeah, and you're leaving tomorrow, aren't you? I know, and I'm actually leaving tomorrow for a uh, Christmas break. So we've had one day together. Ooh. Like, it's not even right. <laughs> But I'll be back next year, don't worry. <laughs> okay, go on. Here, take okay. your sign and go. Bye. Let's go ahead and get started on this cheesecake so she can actually try it. Before Okay, for the crust, we're gonna need graham cracker crumbs, sugar, and melted butter. For the filling, we're gonna need cream cheese, sugar, sour cream, white chocolate that's been melted and cooled slightly so it's not extremely hot and eggs i got a bar of white chocolate to do some chocolate curls on top of the cheesecake so there'll be like a color contrast in between the milk chocolate ganache and then the white chocolate i know sometimes people can feel intimidated by a cheesecake they they don't want to try making a homemade cheesecake and they just go with the box mix a homemade cheesecake is not really that hard to make there's just a few tips that you need to follow and it'll help you make a, a perfect cheesecake the, one of the first tips is your pan you want to line the bottom of it with parchment paper a circle of parchment paper and I'm using a spring form pan a spring form pan is a type of pan that has like a hinge on the side and you can unlatch it and the bottom comes loose so you can lift your dessert out of it so I'll just show you without the cheesecake in it just unlatch it and then you would lift this up and you don't have to worry about messing up the sides of your dessert that you put in there it's pretty neat and you'll also want to either butter the sides or spray it with nonstick cooking spray. Second tip, anytime I bake a cheesecake, I always put water in the oven with it. I don't do a water bath per se. I don't set the cheesecake in the water. I put it on the shelf below it. So it puts moisture in the oven and it keeps the top from cracking. For the temperature, I'm gonna be baking this one at 325. It gives it time to cook properly without cracking or getting over brown so you have a nice level done unburnt cheesecake. The crust, we are mixing the graham cracker crumbs, the sugar and the butter, and then we'll press this into the spring form pan. On my cheesecakes, I don't like the type of crust that comes all the way up to the side. So when I make them, I coat the bottom and then just slightly come up on the edge for a small lip. You can use a hand mixer on this. If you're using the KitchenAid mixer or any other type of stand mixer, you will want to use the paddle attachment and not the whisk because the whisk will incorporate more air into it and it will be more likely to crack. For the filling, we're going to beat together the cream cheese, sugar, sour cream, and white chocolate until it's lump free. And then we'll work on putting the eggs in one at a time. Anytime you're making a cheesecake, you wanna make sure that you start out with room temperature cream cheese, and you'll just wanna let it set out a couple hours before you start making it. After you add the first two eggs, you want to make sure that you scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl so everything gets incorporated correctly. The 
The next step I'm going to show you is completely optional, but if you're like really concerned about having no lumps in your cheesecake whatsoever, you can actually run the mix through a fine mesh sieve and will break up any of the cream cheese lumps in. If your chocolate has hardened up any at all while you were mixing it, it will also get that lump out as well. If you do choose to run it through the sieve, it won't automatically pour through into the shell. You have to add some pressure to it and then it'll eventually go through the sieve. After you pour all the batter into your pan, just level it out and it'll be good to go in the oven. One other way to keep your cheesecake from cracking is after it's done cooking, don't take it out of the oven like right away. What I do is bake it at 325 for 45 minutes. I don't like open the oven a lot or anything like that. Just leave it, let it bake. Then after the 45 minutes, I'll turn the oven off completely. Just leave it in there for 50 minutes. And at that point, the oven has cooled down and the cheesecake has cooled down. After letting it cool in the oven for 50 minutes, I take it out and just let it sit on the counter until it does come completely to room temperature. And then at that point, we can add the ganache and let it chill. This cheesecake is gonna take quite a while to bake and cool and chill. So I'm actually gonna come back tomorrow after it's had time to chill all night long and we'll taste it tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. For the ganache topping, we want it to be thicker so it will set up into a fudge consistency. So we're going to be using a half a cup of heavy cream to one cup of milk chocolate chips. We're going to bring our milk to a simmer, then add in the chocolate chips and cover that and leave it undisturbed for five minutes. And after the five minutes, we'll whisk it till it's completely incorporated and pour that on top of our cooled cheesecake. I went ahead and transferred it to my serving dish. Uh, when I poured the ganache on it, a little bit of it drained down the side, so that looks cute. If we look tired, it's because it's 6.30 in the morning. It's a little too early for cheesecake, but I have to get on the road so I can get home. But that's why we look exhausted, so let's try this. <laughs> Which is really amazing. It's worth kidding up at 6 30. Okay. Six. At 6. I was up at 6. It looks so gorgeous. It's just like the perfect ratio of the crust filling and ganache. So let's try this. That's really good. The filling is so creamy and I really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah's not like a huge chocolate fan, but. Um, it would be really easy to add more of a chocolate flavor to this if you were like a chocolate fan because you could do like an Oreo crust even. And instead of white chocolate in the center, you could add melted dark chocolate, melted milk chocolate just to add more of a chocolate flavor. But I like how it's just a light chocolate flavor and not too overwhelming. So this was definitely a win. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.